This lecture will explain the network class. First, I'll explain the high-level network services, such as HTTP and DNS. Then, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth will also be explained. And lastly, I'll explain using a network at socket level. Note that all the APIs are in the privilege group. Therefore, to use these functions, the appropriate privilege group must be set in the application manifest. First, I'll explain HTTP. The HTTP APIs are in the HTTP privilege group. HTTP is used to get web content using the hypertext transfer protocol. BADA provides the following HTTP features, multi-session and multi-transaction support, and all HTTP 1.0 client features, such as pipelining, chunking, and connection management functions. Additionally, the HTTPS secure protocol, cookies, and authentication are supported. I'll now give you a brief introduction to the HTTP protocol. The HTTP protocol has a session, transaction, request, and response hierarchy. Here, the session is a set of client activities. A session may contain various transactions. These transactions are a set of requests and responses and can be performed in either chunked or non-chunked mode. Now, let's look at how we can actually use HTTP. To use the HTTP protocol, we have to create an HTTP session. We can create a session by specifying the address of the target host. Then, a transaction within this session is opened and a listener to this transaction is added. To acquire necessary data, we have to get the request from the transaction and set the parameters required for the request. At this time, the transaction's listener is IHTTP Transaction Event Listener. If the response to the request arrives from the server, the onTransaction Ready to Read function is called. At this time, you can get the header, status code, and body information from the response. Now, let's take a look at this in more detail using the example source code. Let's see how to create a session and a transaction. First, I set the proxy address and host address strings. Then, I create an HTTP session and construct this session with the HTTP mode, proxy address, and host address parameters. Then, I receive a transaction from the session using the open transaction n function, which returns a transaction pointer. Then, I specify a listener to this transaction. The next part is to send an actual request. First, we need to get the pointer to the request by calling the transaction's getRequest function and set the URI and the request mode. Then, we set the header and put the data in the HTTP header. Then, if the submit function of the transaction is called, the request data is sent to the server. When the data is passed asynchronously, the onTransaction ready to read function is called. At this time, you can get the response using the transaction's getResponse function. If the status code of the response is OK, you can read and use the HTTP header information and the body information in the byte buffer. Now, let's have a look at how to use DNS. The DNS APIs belong to the NET privilege group. The OSP NET DNS class is the class that supports DNS lookup. The class is constructed with a listener and provides functions to get the host name from the address or to get the host address from the name. Since these DNS lookup requests are handled asynchronously, 
the data is received through the iDNS Event Listener Listener. The iDNS Event Listener class has the onDNS Resolution Completed N function that receives the IP host entry pointer as a parameter. By specifying the get address list or get alias list function as a parameter, you can get the address or alias. Let's have a look at an example. In the foo function, the DNS is created and the DNS lookup request is sent. I created the DNS class and constructed the DNS object by setting the listener. If you set the host name by calling the getHostByName function, the onDNS resolution completed n function of the listener object is called. If you call the getAddressList function of the IP host entry, you can get the address list in the iList format. Then you can get the first IP address by calling the getAt function of the list. Now I'll introduce the Wi-Fi feature. The Wi-Fi APIs are in the Wi-Fi privilege group. In BADA, Wi-Fi basically runs in two modes. The first mode is the infrastructure mode. Infrastructure mode is the preparation step to use a wireless LAN. In this mode, the phone is connected to an AP that has a specific SSID. The second mode is the ad hoc mode. Ad hoc mode enables a Wi-Fi network without an AP, an access point. This function makes a peer-to-peer -peer connection between Wi-Fi devices. BADA supports connections with up to eight peers at a time. To provide Wi-Fi functions, the Wi-Fi Manager class is provided. The most important function of the Wi-Fi Manager is activating or deactivating the Wi-Fi device. In addition, functions to scan for available APs and to connect to an AP are provided. Wi-Fi connection state changes are reported through the iWiFi Manager Event Listener. By using the on Wi-Fi activated and on Wi-Fi deactivated functions, you can be notified of the Wi-Fi device activation state change. The on Wi-Fi connected disconnected function lets you know whether the device is connected to an AP through Wi-Fi or not. Also, the on Wi-Fi RSSI changed and on Wi-Fi scan completed N functions are also provided. In ad hoc mode, an ad hoc network is constructed through the ad hoc service class. The ad hoc service class provides the start ad hoc service function to start an ad hoc service and the get neighbors function to scan for neighboring peers. You can get the peer information through the ad hoc peer info class. To exchange data, the send broadcast and unicast message functions are supported. To receive the service state and messages from other peers, there should be a listener. This listener is the I ad hoc service event listener. This listener can identify the start and stop times of the ad hoc service through the on ad hoc started and on ad hoc stopped functions. When a message from another peer arrives, the on message received function is called so that the message can be handled. The ad hoc peer info class provides the get address and get name functions to get the peer information. Now let's take a look at an example that constructs a simple ad hoc network. The ad hoc service sample function constructs the ad hoc network, scans for peers, and broadcasts a string. First, the listener object needs to be prepared. The listener object is declared and an ad hoc service is created by passing a listener object. Then, the neighboring peer information is acquired from the ad hoc service. If there are any peers, 
the peer information of each peer is received, and the name and address are retrieved using the get name and get address functions. In this slide, you can see the procedures to remove the enumerator and the list. To broadcast a message through the ad hoc service, I've prepared the message to be sent in a string format and then sent it by calling the send broadcast message function. Then the ad hoc service is stopped. Now, let's look at the listener related functions. In the on ad hoc service started function, you can implement the things to be done when an ad hoc service starts. In the on ad hoc service stopped function, you can implement the things to be done when an ad hoc service stops. Since the on message received function is called when a message from another peer arrives, you can perform an operation using the peer name and the message. Now I'll explain the Bluetooth APIs. Bluetooth APIs are in the Bluetooth privileged group. The Bluetooth features supported by BADA include the general access profile, the object push profile, the serial port profile, and the point-to-point -point connection. Lastly, let's have a look at the procedure to accept data through the serial port profile. First, I created the Bluetooth manager to use Bluetooth. Then, I created the Bluetooth SPP acceptor to get data through Bluetooth. Then, I constructed the manager by using a listener object. After this, I called the activate function of the Bluetooth manager to turn the Bluetooth device on. Using these procedures, you can connect a device that follows the serial port profile and gets data from the device. When the device requests a connection, the on SPP connection requested function is called. If this function calls the accept connection function of the acceptor, a connection with the device is established. And if the device sends data, the on SPP date received function is called to get the data. Finally, if the device sends a disconnect request, the on SPP disconnected function is called.